Hello, this is Daniel from Fixed It Consulting, where we help companies create edge applications for the Axis network cameras. Today we're going to have a look at the Axis barcode reader, which we can use to read barcodes or QR codes in the camera. And then we're going to combine that reader with a customized application for the camera, which implements our specialized business logic. So in this case, we're going to build a tiny application that reads the barcode information from the Axis barcode reader and then gives access to us uh, to the facilities only once per day. So let's get started. So the first thing I have done is to install the Axis barcode reader application in the camera. I have activated a license for it and I have also um, configured it. So in the configuration I have enabled text overlay, uh, which we won't need later, but for now it is useful for testing purpose. So what this will do is to create a text overlay feature, which contains the information in the QR code that we have read. So to verify this, let's go back to the Axis interface and go to the um, overlay page. Here we can see that I have enabled the rendering of the overlay with the variable hashtag D, which will write the value of the uh, overlay or the value from the uh, QR code in the screen here. So I have also generated QR codes using an online service. I have two different QR codes on my phone, uh, one with my name and one for David Smith and we will later look at uh, how we can use these two to, to count the number of accesses that we have made during the day. For now we just want to verify that the reader actually picks up on the, uh, on the information in the QR code. So I'm going to open the um, QR code on my phone here and I'm going to head over to the camera. And in the top left, we can now see that this QR code contained David Smith and ID 002. If I switch over to the other QR code, we can see that this is my name, Daniel Falk, with ID 001. Another feature of this um, access barcode reader application is that it creates events uh, which can be used by other applications or by event rules. So let's go to the event page in the camera. And here I have already configured two different uh, recipients that we will just use for demo purposes, which will play a sound on a network connected speaker. So we have one one action for the deny command and one action for the granted command. So we can now create an event rule. And for the condition, we will for now select found a barcode. And the action for this will to be to send the notification through HTTP and we're going to send it to the denied um, recipient. So what this will do is to um, look for the event that we have found a QR code and send a notification to this service. So this is just to test that the event system is actually working. So let's again, I will take up my QR code on the phone. So here I have my QR code. And we could hear my network speaker play a command. So the event rule is actually working. The next thing we want to do now is that we want to have some more advanced logic in the camera than what we can build with this event uh, rules. 
So we will actually create a new application that can be installed side by side with a, a barcode reader application and consume the events from the barcode reader and then produce a new event only if the person is allowed. So this application will look at the name of the person in the QR code and count the number of times that person has scanned the code um, during this same uh, day. And if that number is less than one, we will, uh, we will um, grant access. Otherwise, we will decline access. To create our application, we're going to start by using our templating tool, which is a part of our fixed it application CLI. And we're going to use ACAP free for better compatibility with uh, low end cameras. We're going to select the events template, which is an um, template that is ready to consume and produce events, uh, which means that it will already be ready to do most of the things that we want to do for this project. And we're going to name it events QR demo. So now we can see that we have a new folder created which contains uh, all the different source code and files needed to build our application. So this has saved us, saved us a lot of time compared to starting from scratch. Next thing I will do is to um, open the um, events file and um, implement our actual business logic. So configure the event reader to read the events from the QR code application and then implement the logic to allow access if we have not read the QR code earlier today, then save the QR code for later and um, if the QR code is scanned again during the same day we will deny access. So I will uh, pause the video while I implement this logic and will continue um, shortly. I have now implemented the business logic. So we basically create a counter, um, parse the ID of the user and uh, um, checks how many um, access tries the user have done today. Um, the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to build application for the um, specific platform that we're using. So we use an ArtPack 8 camera, we should build for the ARC64 platform. Uh, we have more information about this in other videos. And this created an application package file for us. So let's install this in the camera. We're going to go to the camera user interface to the applications page and add application. This new application has now, uh, is now showing up here. Uh, we make sure it is running. Now the application is started and running. And um, we don't have anything to configure in this application. Um, so uh, the only thing this application does is to consume the events from the barcode reader and produce uh, new events. Now when the application is running, let's go back to the events configuration page. And since our new application is also exposing events, we should see a new application here, the events QR demo access attempt. This event is triggered every time someone tries to um, access by scanning a QR code, and it will either set the granted or the denied. So this is boolean flags which we can use to filter the event. So we're going to create one first that triggers on uh, granted access attempts. And we're again going to use the 
uh, HTTP notification to trigger our network connected speaker with a granted message. And then we create another rule for the denied event. So we trigger on the same event, but filter on the denied property. And we send a notification to the denied uh, message in the network speaker. Our event rules are now ready, so let's go back to the live view where we can see the overlay with the content of the QR code. And we can also open this terminal where we can see the live messages from the camera, the live uh, log from the camera, uh, among those the logs from the application. And I'll open again the QR codes on my phone. Access granted. So we can see now that uh, David Smith has scanned QR code uh, one time and therefore he got granted. If I try again with the same QR code, we get the denied message since he has scanned two times today. So I switch over to the other QR code. Access granted. And I get access granted since this is the first time I scan. And yet again, I can scan it. Access denied. And now I get access denied. And I can switch over back to Mr. Smith and he gets access denied again. He has to wait for tomorrow. So this is how easy it is to write an application that runs on the camera without any dependencies to other hardware or connectivity or cloud services. And uh, especially with the, the tools we have at Fixed It Consulting, uh, the process is uh, much easier and much faster, uh, especially for simple applications like this. So if you're interested in more information about this, you can always uh, reach out to us at Fixed It Consulting using the form on our page, fixedit.ai, or you can uh, send me a message on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, and uh, we can definitely help you with application development. We have everything from education for you developers to uh, consulting services that uh, we perform.